Hello everyone. My name is Qi uh, Wenbo. You can call me Guy Oz. Uh, I'm I'm the maintainer of the Dragonfly. Another speaker is uh, Jiang Han. He is work for the Ant Group. And uh, I hope my introduction can let you you know about the current state of the Dragonfly. And uh, I hope many de developers can be interested in the Dragonfly. Okay, the first page. Uh, uh, I will introduce what is Dronefly. Dronefly provides image acceleration and file distribution on the P2P technology to be the best practice and the standard uh, solution in the cloud native architectures. Uh, it is housed by the uh, Syncef as an uh, incubating project and uh, it is uh, designed to improve the speed of the file distribution in the large-scale clusters and uh, it is used in the fields of the application distribution, log distribution, catch distribution, image distribution, AI data site distribution and AI model distribution. Okay, let me see the uh, container registry of the Syncef landscape. Uh, there are two uh, graduation level and uh, incubation level project. One is the Harbor as an advocate hub. The other is the Dreamfly, uh, provides the uh, image acceleration and the file distribution. Now uh, we have more than 100 contributors and the maintainers comes from the Ant Group, Alibaba Group, uh, ByteDance, Intel, uh, Baidu AI Group and uh, Zhipu AI and uh, Dalian University of the Technology. Next page, I will introduce the NADOS. Uh, NADOS is a sub-project of the Dreamfly, and uh, it provides a file system on the RAFS formats. And uh, it uh, can remove the duplicate trunk in the building and uh, download on-demand band trunk. So, uh, NADOS can reduce the end-to-end -end code launching of the container from the minutes to the seconds. And uh, the maintainers comes from Ant Group, Alibaba Group, and uh, ByteDance. Okay, uh, let me introduce the uh, important milestones of the Dreamfly. Dreamfly has been selected and uh, uh, put into the production by many internet companies since it is open source in the 2017. And uh, it joins the Syncef as a sandbox project uh, in the 2018 and became the incubating project in the 2020. And in the 2020, NIDAS became the uh, Dreamfly's uh, sub-project and uh, uh, it's used wide, widely used in the image acceleration. Uh, in the uh, 2021, uh, Dreamfly released uh, the two, version 2, and uh, now Dreamfly is not only used in the image acceleration, but also uh, can use it in the uh, file distribution and the AI data distribution. Uh, now Dreamfly maintainers believe that uh, the project is ready for graduation, so we submitted the Dreamfly uh, graduation proposals. Now, Dreamfly focuses on three parts. The first part is uh, image acceleration. Uh, Dreamfly supports the container clients such as uh, Docker, uh, Kinode, and so on. And uh, uh, it provides three solutions to uh, in the image acceleration. Uh, the first solution is to use Dreamfly to distribute the container image, which is uh, suitable for the uh, large scale cluster. The second solution is to use Dreamfly and NIDAS to distribute accelerated image, which is suitable for the large scale cluster and uh, the faster container launching. The second, uh, uh, the third solution is to use NIDAS 
uh, to distribute the accelerated image, which is which is uh, suitable for the uh, faster container launching. And uh, uh, in the fields of the uh, file distribution, uh, Jumpfly uh, support uh, the uh, protocols include uh, HTTP and uh, HDFS. Uh, it also supports the object storage protocols, include uh, uh, S3, uh, OSS, uh, OBS, and so on. So we have been working for the image acceleration and uh, file distribution for almost six years. Uh, I think uh, this uh, Jumpfly is the standard and the best practice in this field. Uh, in the AI infra, uh, Jumpfly is paused to distribute the model and the, this site through the Jumpfly based on the P2P technology. Now Jumpfly support the Triton server and the Torch server to distribute the model uh, through the Jumpfly. And it also support the, uh, it also support to distribute this site and the model uh, from the hugging face by the Python SDK uh, through the Jumpfly. Uh, in the future, uh, we will pay more attention to the AI infra because we believe the P2P technology is the best solution uh, to resolve the uh, resolve the model distribution. Okay, uh, next part I will introduce the uh, why we use Jumpfly. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, Kubernetes clusters, and uh, these clusters has uh, uh, 1,000 uh, nodes, and each node will download a large file or large image or large uh, model at the same time. For the storage, there are uh, 1,000 concurrent download requests, so the storage can easily reach the uh, limitation bandwidth limitations, and uh, this will cause the uh, slower uh, file downloads and the slower uh, uh, container launching. So, uh, how to resolve this? We have three solutions. The first solution is to increase the bandwidth of the storage. But no matter how to increase the bandwidth of the storage, as a backend storage, it must have uh, limitations. So this is not a best uh, solution. The second solution is to use the P2P technology to use the uh, idle bandwidth of the nodes to eliminate the impact of the storage bandwidth limitation. So Jumpfly uses the uh, P2P technology to eliminate the bandwidth limitation. Uh, the second solution is to reduce the download files. We can remove the duplicate content in the building and uh, download on demand uh, in the running to reduce the file size. So neither will remove the duplicate uh, content by the trunk and uh, download on demand by the uh, trunk uh, in the file system. So Jumpfly includes the second solution and, and the third solution. Okay, uh, in this sharing, I will focus on the AI inference. Uh, one, we download a large model file uh, in, a, in a large scale clusters. Uh, we must face the problem of the uh, bandwidth limitation of the storage. So Jumpfly support uh, hugging face SDK, gate LFS protocols, uh, Triton server and the Torch server to distribute the model uh, through the Jumpfly. So we can easily use the Jumpfly in the AI inference. That's uh, the best uh, solution uh, to use the Jumpfly to forward the download model traffic to the P2P network. So uh, we, can <coughs> we can use the uh, Jumpfly uh, to distribute the model uh, based on the P2P technology. So 
users can upload the model to the model registry. And uh, the interface serving will download the model from the model registry through the drone fly. So we can use the idle bandwidth uh, of the uh, node to eliminate the bandwidth limitation. OK, this performance testing of the hugging face to use the drone fly, uh, distribute the model and uh, this site. Uh, for detail, we can find the document uh, in the Dronefly website. <coughs> the next part is uh, uh, performance testing of the Git LFS protocols to download the AI model uh, through the Dronefly. Okay, this is uh, uh, the performance testing of the uh, Torch serve to use Dronefly to distribute the AI model. Uh, by the Torch service native plugin. Uh, so you can also find the document in the uh, Jonfly website. Okay, uh, in the futures, uh, we will release the new version uh, in the first half of this year. And we will focus on the AI inference. So there are two important features uh, we are released in the new version. Uh, the first uh, important feature uh, is that Dronefly will support uh, to write the large file into the peer. Uh, for a large file write to the peers, uh, this peer uh, need only uh, report the metadata to the Dronefly scheduler. So this file can be downloaded by the other peers without uploading the model to another storage, just like uh, S3. Uh, so this feature uh, will, um, will, will support the AI, AI model and the AI uh, this site to, to distribute uh, read and write faster in the P2P network. Okay, the second feature is that Dronefly will support the RDMA for the uh, faster network transmission in the P2P network. Okay, uh, the, so it uh, also can load the model uh, into the uh, memory directly and the uh, CPU offload and the zero copy. Okay, uh, the following will share, sharing, shared by the Jiang Han. Okay, thanks. Bonjour, everyone. Well, uh, it looks like uh, everyone is working on the AI. So let's take a look on something else. Well, <clears throat> I will start the background of the whole project we built. The, we, we built a system called Hughes, which means Hyper Unified Service Engine. And we built this in order to handle both service functioning and uh, the spark job from the big data uh, application. And we also support the uh, task from the Flink. And why we build this? Uh, the answer is easy, that we want to uh, standardize the allocation of resource. Well, you can see that uh, we have lots of scheduler in different systems, like we have scheduler in Kubernetes, and they are used to uh, schedule the port. And uh, we have scheduling the YAM, that we use that to deploy the uh, task from the Spark. So we want to build a unified uh, engine to schedule everything. Oh, that's the background. Okay, next I will uh, give a brief statement of the system. Uh, you can see that uh, the whole architecture is just like the uh, Lambda uh, from AWS. And I will focus on the uh, node level. I reduce, uh, in order to reduce the redundancy, I hide lots of DDRs. Okay, let's <coughs> take a look at that. Uh, if a user uh, invokes the function service, uh, we will download the, we will download the, uh, the files from different storage registry by Dragonfly, and we have a node worker on the node side. It's just like a Kubernetes in Kubernetes, and <clears throat> you can see that we will download uh, different files from the different backend. That we will download the Spark jar packages for the 
big data, and we will download the user code and the runtime images for the serverless function. And uh, uh, when we download uh, them, we will start a container, uh, something like a container, but it's not actually. Yeah, and uh, that's the whole architecture. <coughs> Next, I will explain why we choose Dragonfly as the downloading utility in the whole system. Well, you can see that the first reason and the most important, we need to download files from different backend. First, just like the Git large file storage and uh, something from the Git directory and also HDFS and OSSS. Uh, well, I have to say that uh, the Dragonfly inherently support all those backend and uh, so it saves us a lot of time when we develop the whole system. The, uh, and I just showed the uh, data from the benchmark website for the AWS Lambda and uh, you can see that the time cost of the code star is just under 150 milliseconds. That is very fast. And what what's the time cost? Uh, they download the user code and uh, start a container in the node, node, and the time underscores the necessary for a swift download. That you cannot spend too much time on downloading the the thing you need when you want to build a serverless architecture. Yeah, and uh, the last reason why I chose the Dragonfly is because the maintainer guy was just said by, by, said by me. So if I got some problem in the production cluster, you know, I can find him. Okay. <coughs> and next, I will show you guys some uh, special scenario that uh, we meet in the cluster. The first is well, we need, we, there are a significant difference in the file size in the system because we need to download the huge images for the service functions and for the Spark tasks. But sometimes the Spark tasks files are very small. It could be 50 MBs. And uh, uh, let me give an example that you have two types of tasks. The first one is full of the, they need to download the file uh, like uh, 50 MBs. And the second type, they, want, they need to download the 10 GB task. And uh, in such scenario that you need to, uh, you need to uh, schedule when you, you need, you need to think about the, the, the file size when you schedule. And you cannot uh, schedule all tab one's task in the one node. And you need to consider about this. And the next question is that in some scenario, we need to download a large number of files, just like uh, Spark. Well, many tasks, tasks in Spark, they, they contain uh, uh, lots of files, like, just like uh, configuration and some initial files. And the file number can reach 1,000. And uh, in such scenario, well, I gave a benchmark test that you can see that uh, uh, if the file numbers uh, come to the 2,000 and the, to the time cost becomes becomes over two minutes. And uh, uh, we've, we've dive into the reason why, why the file numbers could, can cause such a result. It's because more file will cause more uh, damage to the Dragonfly's uh, schedule. So uh, the solution is uh, that we compress all the files in the Spark job, and uh, then we will decompress them after we download them. It's pretty easy, right? Okay, <clears throat> next, I will give an instruction about how we deploy the whole system, uh, focusing on the node level. Uh, we, 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 we bound the necessary components uh, in an image, just like the walker daemon and the dragonfly daemon and some runtime binaries. We put all, we put all, the, all of this into an image, and then we deploy the image as a port in the native Kubernetes, and you can see that we allow this port can run in different uh, quality of service. As an example, we, we make the port running under the batch C group, which is a low level than the online C group. And uh, by, this, uh, by this deployment method that we can improve the 
uh, resource utilization in the single node. Uh, next, <coughs> the, whole, the whole deployment uh, method can bring us lots of benefits. The first one is the whole cluster is scalable. That's, uh, we have a schedule to detect the lack of resource. And when it finds we, we need to scale out some new port, it will call the API server to create, create, create a new port. And uh, the secondary that we, is uh, the whole system supports multi tennis that uh, we support uh, different configuration for different tennis in, in, a, in a cluster. We will make different uh, configuration by config map and we will mount the different config map into different ports. And the whole system is configurable. That's because uh, if you modify the config map and you apply it, it will immediately uh, get into the cluster and uh, you don't need to restart the port. Okay, <clears throat> in order to give you a brief insight of our skill, I just featured a data panel from the, our grandfather and you can see that during last week, we the maximum task create can reach 1.44 million. It's, it's pretty big, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, and uh, in order to show the performance of Dragonfly, I, draw, I just fetch uh, the data for 20, last 20 hour, for 24 hours. And uh, you can see that there is a spike around 10 a.m. <clears throat> because this is a active time for the online business. Uh, and uh, under, uh, during this interval, the batch state group will be strained and the whole port will, whole port's performance will be strained. And uh, apart from this interval, you can see the, uh, the Dragonfly's downloading speed is very stable uh, ac across the whole day, yes. And this is a data in a single day, but uh, I have to point out additionally that Dragonfly has supported the uh, stable download uh, speed uh, during the last years, and it's pretty good. Okay, that's all, that's the all container I want to share, and if you're interested, you can scan the QR code to access the Dragonfly's official website, and that's all. Well, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, very excellent uh, work. I'm Chao from Huawei, and just okay. one question. Uh, for the peer-to-peer -peer software image distributing, and uh, it is very important from my point of view to yep. decide that the first node to uh, pour the uh, image, and uh, it can distribute this image to the third one, and to the second one, and the second one, and the third one could be another source of peer-to-peer, -peer. yes? Yeah. So how to choose the very first one node? And uh, do you have some schedulers, and uh, do you have some algorithms related to the schedulers, and uh, uh, it is open source it, and could you give me our, our audience uh, more information on that? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, okay, I got your question. And uh, we do have the scheduler in Dragonfly system, and uh, we have all about the uh, technology details in our website, and you can find the documentary in the website. It's very detailed, and I, uh, I trust you can find the answer by yourself. And uh, we actually, uh, actually, I contributed a letter to the Dragonfly. So if you want more details, I can find the guy who's to answer the questions. Do you want that? Or do you just want to find the answer by yourself? Is it okay to... Gauss? Okay, control? come. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hurry up, man. Okay. The, the P2P, okay, the first uh, image pulled from the ori origin uh, the storage. Uh, fly uh, select the, just like the PT tracker. Uh, uh, if you know about the BT, BT protocols, you know about the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, first uh, BT have a tracker to do the uh, schedule. Okay, Dumbfly uh, 
have the uh, schedule uh, in, in the clusters and uh, uh, we can uh, we can select uh, Dreamfly have the two types of peers. The fir is, first is the peer, the second is the seed peer. So in our clusters, uh, if the file uh, download in the P2P first uh, scheduler will target the seed peer uh, download from the source uh, origin uh, and uh, the peer will download from the seed peer. So we can deploy the some uh, uh, we can deploy the seed peer uh, in some the uh, in some the nodes. Uh, it, it have the better network. Uh, okay, uh, so we can pull pull the first uh, uh, quickly. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, <clears throat> thanks for questioning. And uh, uh, additionally, I like just mentioned in the slide that. If you download too much files, uh, and it will cause pressure to the Dragonfly's dra uh, schedule, so yeah, you need to take take care of that. So, anything else, guys? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. That's all. Enjoy.